Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Now, as you know, I build fake rockets in video games, but sometimes I want to build something more substantial. And this is what I've been spending the last few, uh, last couple of months on. This was a Christmas gift. It is obviously, as you can tell, a scale model of the Saturn V, and it came in a kit. This is Revel, they uh, make... I don't know, I, I remember getting these kits as a kid. There was either Revel or Airfix, and they would build warplanes, and I would build them and then try to fly them, and they wouldn't fly because they were models they weren't supposed to fly. But this, yeah, 144th scale, which means 12 feet to 1 feet, uh, sorry, 1 inch. So you, there's these tiny little guys here. They are about half an inch tall, and there's three of them, and you can tell that... The actual Saturn V would, of course, be massive. Now, the Saturn V, as you know, is the rocket which carried the Apollo astronauts to the moon, and it was a monster. 3,000 tons. It had one, two, three major stages, and then the payload, of course, was a, an entirely more complicated spacecraft. This kit uh, comes in plastic parts. You uh, got to assemble it yourself. You then have to paint it yourself, which explains the kind of crappy paint job that I've done. But whatever, I quite enjoy doing this. Uh, <laughs> there are some of the parts that will not stick together particularly well. I had a lot of trouble putting this first stage together. And these doors here are sorry, these petals here. These are awful and these will almost certainly break if I take this thing apart. But I'm going to take this thing apart because I want to show you that this thing actually, um, this comes apart, right? I mean, that's how it's designed. So yeah, yeah, obviously you get a base here that says America's moon rocket, Apollo Saturn. And I can actually, if I'm very careful here, take this off here. I'm trying to not damage anything. So there is the first step and you can see it does can, oh, oh, and we're going to lose the top there. We're going to have premature separation. It has five rocket motors on the bottom. Those are, of course, the uh, F1 engines, most powerful rocket engine ever made. Seven mega newtons of thrust. This whole rocket at launch weighed just under 3,000 tons. So five of those, that was uh, 35 uh, mega newtons which approximates, I guess, about 1.2 G or thereabouts. This first stage is running kerosene and liquid oxygen, and it would burn for uh, about two, just over two minutes. Then the whole thing would, of course, stage. And I'm just going to very carefully do this. Now, the interstage is supposed to come off, but I'm not going to do that. So, yeah, this is the first stage. Look at how big that is. That is about 2,400 tons. This is about 600 tons. Seconds after the staging, the launch escape system will disappear and it will fly off. Launch escape system included a cover to protect the rocket, or sorry, to protect the capsule below it from erosion due to the thruster system. Actually, you know, for aerodynamic stability reasons, they actually had to have a, a ballast of depleted uranium in the nose of this thing. So, yeah, then we're left with this. They've reached about 2,400 meters per second, maybe. Um, this, from this point on, the two, next two stages of the Saturn V are burning liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen, which is, of course, much more efficient in terms of specific impulse, but uh, lower thrust. So, if you look down here on the bottom there, I really don't like this engine assembly. That is supposed to be the five J2 engines, and they are nothing like the real thing. The, this is the worst part of the whole model for me. I, they didn't even try. I'm sorry. Anyway, yeah, that's about, you know, four, 450 tons. And after that's boosted the whole rocket up to about 6.2 kilometers per second, there is another stage and I can do that there. Look at that. So I can just ditch that off to the side there. So you can get an idea of these stages. So this one, uh, this stage will then continue on towards the moon here. So again, we have a J2 engine here. This upper stage here will generate about 4.2 kilometers per second of delta V. It needs one to get into orbit, and then the, the crew would pause in orbit, they would do a whole systems check, 
then after they came around one more time, they would then begin their translunar injection burn headed to the, towards the moon. That would take about three kilometers per second. And they would put it onto, or they would end up smashing these things into the moon. But before that, they would, of course, complete their burn and the service module would come out. This is where the astronauts actually are. And look at the size of that engine. It's almost as big as the J2 because this was actually designed. Uh, the engine in this was originally envisaged to be part of a direct ascent mission where the whole spacecraft would have to lift off from the moon and it never in the end. So I'm just gonna put this down here. These guys, have, they fly out a little and the payload doors open. Now I'm gonna be very gentle here because it's quite common that the hinges on this will break. Uh, I'm gonna break it, I know, I'm pushing it too hard. There, that's one petal, two petal. He loves me, she loves me not. There, so we get the lunar module in here and I should actually move this all closer to the camera so you can actually see. So yeah, this has come forward. It now rotates around and then translates in, docks with the lunar module, and pulls it out. And there, we now have our spacecraft on the way to the moon. Isn't that marvelous? Yeah, on the way to the moon, and I hope you can see that. So this, after Apollo 13 and onwards, the third stage of the Saturn V was deliberately crashed into the moon for, um, scientific data gathering reasons and not because they hated the stage. And as you know, the next part is this flies up around the moon. They use this engine to put it into, uh, into inject it into orbit around the moon. Um, then once they get into the correct position, this detaches, goes down and lands on the moon. Look at this. Look, it's beautiful. Da, da, da little legs that come out and everything. The model is pretty decent. I mean, you know, I'm, as again, I painted this terribly. Someone suggested that I should get some like um, candy or whatever that has gold foil and use that, but I didn't do that. So yeah, astronauts would land on the moon, they would do their science, you know, one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind, and of course launch, fly back into space. And once they're back in space, they would expertly uh, get into the same orbit, dock with this, transfer over, and then ditch this as dead weight, which would eventually fall back to the moon. Then the command module would leave lunar orbit, head back to the Earth, and just before entering the atmosphere, the crew cabin, the capsule, would separate, re-enter, and that would be the end of the mission. It would be recovered. So that is a complete model there. You see, it's great that it comes into all these different parts. Um, the color, uh, the black and white coloring markings that they suggest are not like the real ones. Uh, and I painted mine based off some pictures and then I found some other pictures. They're not the real ones either. I painted these with enamel paints and a lot of people say, no, you should use airbrushes. Um, the details, by the way, those are all transfers. They come in a kit, you basically moisten them with water and then uh, they'll easily stick onto the side. So you don't need to be very carefully painting USA onto the site. You just need to get, you know, black and white. Um, yeah, this is nice and beer stained. One of the fun things that I do want to comment on is that there's this nice big description about Apollo Saturn V here, all written in German. And then next to it, there is a version in English. And it's very clear to me that the version in English has simply been translated from German to English. Armstrong was the first to clamber out and become the first man on the moon. His famous first words were, this is only one step for a man, but a great leap forward for mankind. <laughs> okay, the terrible impersonation there. Uh, yeah, they just ran that through Google Translate. But whatever, I, I really enjoy building the model. It is like a level four, by the way, which is apparently harder than average. I uh, did it badly, which is probably, I'm going to blame it on it being a hard model. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> but you know, I had a lot of fun doing it. Now, this costs like 50 bucks. Like if you look at it on Amazon, 50 bucks plus, you know, probably another 20 to get the paints and the other bits and pieces you're gonna to need to put these models together. If you just wanna build models of rockets, there's also the paper craft option. There's a bunch of websites that let you download uh, basically printer diagrams that you can print on your color printer and then cut them out and fold them and ever create like a spacecraft. And some of these look really, really good. So if you just want to build a rocket and you don't want to spend 50 bucks, take a look at the papercraft stuff. Also, if you know a rocket nerd and it's their birthday and you've forgotten to get a, forgot to get them a present, just download these things and print them and say, hey, I got you a papercraft rocket, you see? Yeah, I mean, you could do that like, you know, as you're, yeah, never mind. Anyway, one other thing I got was the Haynes Manual for the Saturn V by David Woods. So in Britain, you know, when you would get a car, when I was like a teenager, I got a, like a Fiat Uno. Well, actually, well, I didn't really get it. But yeah, you would get one of these and it would tell you how to fix everything. It would have all the diagrams. They would tear the car apart and they would uh, tell you exactly how to fix everything. This is great. It's just basically like a historical guide with some really extreme details on, um, you know, like pump diagrams and things like this. It's a, a great book for people that are interested in more detail than you're going to find on, say, Wikipedia or something. Yeah, actually, there, there are the second stage engines, the J2 engine cluster. Compare against this. Yeah, that is a sad comparison, I'm sure you'll agree. But yeah, going Saturn V crazy, loving it. And uh, yeah, if you guys feel like getting it, you can see it's an Apollo Saturn V by Revel Models. This is NASA Saturn V by Haynes. They're all both on Amazon. And uh, I shall have this displayed somewhere, no doubt, in the future. And, uh, will not be part of the pride of my collection, I guess. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.